Nephi is having a replaying of his father's dream that remixes elements and images of that dream with scenes from history. Right, so, so Lehi's dream has two purposes. One is a teaching purpose, right? It's to help us understand something about Christ and about God and about our path back to them. But it has another purpose. It's more than just a teaching tool. It's meant to be an experience in itself, right? It's not meant to teach, just teach about the love of God, but it's meant to give Lehi himself the experience of the love of God as he tastes that fruit, which was sweeter than any fruit and more desirable above anything. It's more than just learning something in his head. It's experiencing it and feeling it and knowing it. So we have both of those purposes, the teaching purpose and the experiential purpose, I think, remixed here in 1 Nephi 11. So part of what the, the spirit and the angel want to do is, is just teach Nephi what the elements of this dream mean. So we can look here in, in chapter 11, verse 25. It came to pass that I beheld that the rod of iron, which my father had seen, was the word of God, which led to the fountain of living waters, or to the tree of life, which waters are a representation of the love of God. And also I beheld that the tree of life was a representation of the love of God. So now we understand something about Lehi's dream. And you'll see if we fast forward to, to chapter 15, this is kind of an introductory way of learning. And this is how Nephi teaches his brothers. Um, when he comes back with them, he kind of explains to them in this very straightforward way. Well, there was this image in dad's dream and here's what it means. And then there was this image and here's what it means. But that's just the first step. If we stop there, I think we haven't really encountered the scriptures with the depth that we should. The scriptures should change us. They should change our heart, not simply teach us something that stays in our head. And you know, the, the angel has a very special word for this kind of love of the Savior that we experience, the condescension of God. If we break that word apart, condescension, we can see these two parts of it, right? Con, that means with, and then descend means to come down, right? So literally condescension means that Christ was willing to leave his celestial glory in heaven and to come down with us on earth, to be born as a child in a body, to suffer the indignity of, mm -hmm. of diapers and being carried in his mother's <laughs> arms, right? And to experience all that we experience with us and alongside us. And when we realize that, and when we feel that, um, we are changed. Mm -hmm. And it's something that goes beyond what we know. It's something that we feel. Mm -hmm.